Welcome to the Good Time Show. I'm your host, Damon Epps, and today I'd like to introduce Gary Vernon, a visionary trailblazing, transforming Northwest Arkansas with his world-class mountain biking trails. Before we dive into the conversation, I'd like to give a special thanks to our sponsors. Blake Street House is a vibrant social club where people from all walks of life come together just to be themselves and make our community and the world a more inclusive and better place for all. And I'd also like to thank The Ledger, a world-class first bikeable building, offering state-of-the-art workspace solutions and redefining the concept of work-life integration in downtown Bentonville. It's more than just a place of work. It's a hub for creativity, community, and innovation. And now, in this episode, we explore Gary Vernon's inspiring journey from building bicycles at Walmart to leading a development of over 600 miles of mountain bike trails in Northwest Arkansas and also here to discuss the recent tornado devastation in the area and how the community is coming together to rebuild the whole thing. So, that said, now let's dive into the show. How are you doing today, Gary? Pretty damn good. I have a feeling you're exhausted. You know, um, it's been a good week. I mean, it's it's uh, it's really, you know, the, the day after the tornado and going out and looking at everything, you're like, wow, we're going to be closed for a year or more. The trails are devastated, but that first week seeing 250 people, volunteers show up to help us clean up the entire castle area, and it got cleaned up in two hours. Wow. Um, you know, after several professionals are changed on the day before, but 250 people coming and do anything happens quick. So we got we got the entire castle cleaned up. The, uh, the Trailblazers organization just sent out a you know, an alert. Hey, we need we need help with the with the uh, cleanup of the castle on a Wednesday night. Two hundred and fifty people showed up. This- so, just to kind of give everybody else that doesn't know what happened, how many weeks has it been since the tornado happened? It was the twenty uh, sixth of May, so it's been a month. So it's been a month. So a month ago, anyone that does not know, there was a tornado that ripped through Northwest Arkansas, specifically Rogers and Bentonville, and tore down trees all over the place. Gary is involved in building the most intricate bike trails in the world, as we've claimed it. It's the mountain bike capital of the world, as of now, Bentonville is. And um, trees fell everywhere, and it has been a huge disaster all over the place. And it's been a real bummer for me and my buddies who really like to mountain bike because we all think. But it seems to be clearing up very quickly. How did you get into... I mean, I don't even know how far. Should we just go all the way back to to when you um, decided to get into biking, or like, how did you stumble into this world? Well, I've I grew up in just an hour up the road in Missouri, you know, and uh, was was an evil Knievel fanatic, you know. So I was a, and uh, so I got into motorcycles and bicycles, but I, I raced BMX. Okay, you know, like back in the early '80s, it was a you know it was really kind of a it was peaking from like '81 to '84 was a big deal around here. BMX, just, just like California. Oh, okay. And uh, I BMXed in, in Springdale, Arkansas, even, you know, back in 81. But um, got into motorcycles, but found found mountain biking in the late 80s. And it was a wonderful cross between motorcycles and BMX, you know, a bigger bicycle. And, uh, you know, wanted to, uh, you know, pursue that. But anyway, along the way, I, I got a job at Walmart back in high school. Because that's what we do in Bentonville. Well, actually, I was in Joplin and got oh, the job. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. so you were—it was real Walmart. You it was were, real Walmart. It was a store. You weren't like intern. A, you were just a guy working at a store. I needed to, I needed to raise some money to buy a new Honda dirt bike, and I needed a steady job. And it, the part-time job at the at the bike shop didn't pay the bills, so I went to Walmart, and I ended up staying there, like through college and all that. So, if you're at Walmart in a store and your career is progressing. You end up in Bentonville, Arkansas. That's how that <laughs> happened. Now, nobody else comes back in, you know, 20 years ago when I moved here, 21 years ago in 03. Nobody came here unless you were working for Walmart and you you got a home office job mm-hmm. or you were a, a supplier for Walmart and you had to come here and do your two years tour of duty, you know, to get promoted. If you're a Procter & Gamble, you had to come here and represent Procter & Gamble for two mm-hmm. years at Walmart. Then you went to their corporate office and got promoted. So... Really, the people, yeah, nobody really wanted to stay here. People people didn't think about Northwest Arkansas or especially Bentonville as a place that they wanted to relocate. Now, 
that's all changed now, as you know. I, I mean, you're, you're here from Hollywood. Yeah, I'm here from Hollywood. And I got to tell you, I, this is the honest truth. And I say this over and over again. I don't know if I would have lived here even five years ago yeah. or even six years ago. Yeah. For sure, not six years ago. For sure, five, probably not. But even four, in the past three years, this place is just, it's mind blowing. Well, and it's, in my op humble opinion, it's all based around, you know, Tom Walton's early vision in 06 of adding some mountain bike trails here. Because that transformed this community, mountain bike trails. And that started, I'd heard a rumor. You know, I'd, I'd moved here for my Walmart career in 2003. And, of course, what, is a, what does an old mountain biker do when he moves to a new location? You start building little crappy trails. And in Bella Vista, we, me and a few other friends made a route out there. And I, but I'd heard that the city of Bentonville was building a legitimate trail, and I didn't believe it. But my, my son— And this was Tom? Tom had this idea of bringing five mile, you know, building a five mile trail system on the north edge of, of Bentonville, which is right now it's called Phase One. You know, or, you know, it just kind of stuck. Phase One Slaughter Pen, that trail system that's along the highway. Oh, so, so okay, wait yep. a second. So Slaughter Pen, the one that we all talk about, was the the OG. The first five miles were built on that north hillside that's along the highway. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. And so. I stumbled across that. I was driving into town. My son, who's 18 now, he was about 10 months old in, the, in a car seat, and I'm driving into town. It's winter, so you can see the trail being cut up the hill. So I pulled in. I said, oh, my God, I've you know, there's a real trail there. And I hiked up the woods and ran into 23-year-old Tom Walton and his Aunt Alice and, on the trail. And, and that led to a, 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 a friendship and, and riding, and I ended up being the— the president of the local volunteer club that helped, you know, maintain the trail. That's so interesting. So you didn't know Tom until you ran into him on a on a trailhead. Didn't know him. Many yeah. months. Nobody ago. nobody knew who Tom Walton was, and when he was twenty three, he'd been away to college and oh, got it, and uh, just showed up and changed the world. That's fascinating. So who who built the first five miles? Just Tom he, and a couple of people. He picked up a an Arkansas mountain bike guidebook and a, and a guy uh, who wrote the book um, he called him up and said hey can you build trail and and sure enough they started building trail and that actually ended up being a relationship that uh, Nathan Woodruff joined in on and that became progressive trail designs which there's still okay. yeah got yeah. it so that guy's progressive trail designs yep okay and then you were working at Walmart what division of Walmart were you working in? I was actually a director in the environmental division. Had a really good job, you know, recycling projects and uh, doing, I mean, just, it was a great job. But as I was, you know, a volunteer, you know, for the trails, I kept getting projects from Tom. Hey, look at this. Go to this conference. Do this, you know. And, uh, you know, about 2014, I was had two full-time jobs, you know, for Walmart <laughs> and, and trail and so I actually, uh, in 15, 2000, early 2015, I, I wrote a job description. I, I mean, I could see where things were getting ready to just explode on development of trails. And they had, you know, Tom and his brother Stuart got together then. And those two guys together are so brilliant. I'm, I'm like, they need somebody, you know, to, to guide this work. And so I wrote a job description and said, all the things I'm doing now, I just wrote them down on a list. Like, you need somebody to oversee trail design take your ideas and, and execute them through trail builders, have events to promote the area and so forth, you know, get kids and, and, and women on bikes and through advocacy groups. So all that, um, set it down, you know, I, you know, sat down with them for half an hour and said, you know, with everything you're doing, you guys need to really think about having somebody full time at the foundation do this. And, and I, I'm your man. And Stuart said, you'd leave Walmart after 30 years. And I'm like, for this job, hell yeah, you know. So they hired me, and I've been there since. That's crazy. It's very cool. It's a very cool job. It's the greatest job that I could ever dream of. This is not my dream job. It's I never dreamed of his job. Job. So and this has been a, a wonderful thing for me. But um, how long were you working for? Um, uh, I mean, how long were you? You said Tom was two thousand fifteen. Two thousand. I started in 2015 working for Thomas Dirt, but I'd been at Walmart for almost 31 years. Got it. So 2015, and then you pitched the idea. I pitched the idea in like 
early 15 and they hired me a few months later. Oh, got it. Got it. Got it. When, when would, oh, that's right. Cause you didn't build Slaughter Pen. When was Slaughter Pen? What was the first? It opened in, in 2007. Oh, wow. Five miles. And then it grew to 12 and 18. And then, and then, uh, you know, when I came on board, we were really able to just do a lot of projects, you know, at once. And so we were building uh, at one time uh, two to three miles a week of new trails in the peak time of building trail, two to three miles a week, you know, in the region and, and even outside the region and state parks and around the state of Arkansas, two to three miles of new trail per week. It was crazy. Wow. I mean, think about that. If you came here and rode, um, you know, spent a week and rode 100 miles, you know, of our 600 miles or 1,200 miles around the state, the next year you come back and be over 100 more new miles that you hadn't even seen before. So That's think about crazy. that. That was happening for a couple of years. You know, now we've, we've really slowed down the pace and we're doing quality, not quantity, and really focusing on special, you know, special features and, and experiences. But that was, that was reality for probably three years. Wow. You know, of building that many miles. That's crazy. So now now if you're if you're in northwest Arkansas and you're based out of Bentonville, you have nearly six hundred miles of trail within, you know, an hour and a half drive, let's say that. But around the state we've got twelve hundred miles of we're talking mountain bike trail, world class mountain bike trail that you can you know, you can ride a bicycle on, an e bike on too if you want. And that is in the state of Arkansas. It's it's really uh it, and that started with the five miles. Started well. There was already trail out there. We had some trail in the national forest. Right. Yeah, and, I guess so. But the the boom around here in northwest Arkansas started, you know, just going crazy with that five mile trail system. And it's really interesting to watch, um, like the Greenway. I mean, me and me and my buddy, you know, we, uh, you know, we 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 go down the path just to see how far the Greenway goes. But it's it's really cool, just like getting over to the Amp right now. It's been yeah, that's been really cool. Um, so if I, so if I, so if I was downtown and I left from Wright's barbecue and I could, and I never had to see, so is that 600 miles? Could I do 600 miles? It's, it's 218 that you can leave the downtown square and ride trail in, in Bentonville and Bella Vista, 218 miles. And okay. Gr- and growing a little bit. Now, if, if you were on the greenway, you could access on paved trail quite a bit more, but if you'd have to get in your car to hit. The, all the 560 miles to say got it it's kind of sprinkled out you know Eureka Springs has got a wonderful trail system that connects through its town 50 or 60 miles there and you got Hobbs State Park which is east of here 40 minutes you know and that's 50 some miles and you know Fayetteville Springdale have wonderful trails Salem Springs has a whitewater park with a trail system right above it and uh, just so you know so many different little pockets of different experiences. Now, it's not all the same. We, we purposely try to build different trail experiences. And and, uh, and along the way, the, the state of Arkansas perked up and realized what an economic impact that trails are. And they started building trails with us. We helped them put trails in the state parks. So there's four trails in Arkansas state parks that are called monument trails. And uh, they were rated by Outside Magazine as the best trail systems in the U.S., last year. So the state parks is on board. Now they're, they're pursuing a, a lift access gravity park down in Mina, which we're excited about. We've been kind of working. Where's Mina? It's, it's two hours and 15 minutes due south of Bentonville on old highway 71. Is Mina where they, where, um, all that property that just was purchased that they say is one of the greatest sunsets. I don't know. Somebody was telling me about this. There's a lot of great sunsets in Arkansas. Yeah, they were like it's but, a but valley. Or you'll something. know Mina because you're you're an old Hollywood guy. Remember Tom Cruise's movie uh, American Made, where he's the yes. pilot. Yes, that is based on a true story out of Mina, Arkansas. Oh. and so that I mean, there's there's people down there that are not able to say what happened down there, but for some reason, Damon, there's a giant airport down there. You know, with six thousand linear feet runways, two of them. And, you know, like Bentonville Airports was just 3,200, you know, the little municipal. <laughs> but Mina has doubled its length. And so what that means is we can we can fly, you know, regional jets in there, you know, and, and to this bike park. But this, the town of Mina is 5,000 people. It's a beautiful town. And it's got twelve to 1,400 foot of elevation compared to our 
three to four hundred around here. Okay. So we, we'll have a we'll have a year round lift access bike park in Mina that's going to be mind blowing. So you'll be able to come to Bentonville, do your you know wonderful trail riding. If you want to get really crazy and do a lift access downhill, you drive or we'll fly you down there from the Bentonville airport and uh, spend the day at Mina. It's going to wow. be awesome. That's amazing. Mm hmm. Okay, so you went from Walmart, and then, and when Tom hired you, was that that was part of the Walton Family Foundation? Went over to that Walton Family Foundation because a lot of this work has been historically charitable grants. It's been matching grants to communities since they have, you know, Bentonville was kind of the proving ground that hey, if you build trails, this is what happens to your community. People want to come here first of all and spend their money, but also they want to relocate here. They they want to live here. They want to be next to an outdoor recreation community because you can, you know, instead of throwing your bike on a rack and driving four hours to a national forest, if you can leave the neighborhood with your kids and get on a trail, that just changes your life. Or if you just leave work on lunch with your friends or after lunch, ride to Kohler Bike Park and have a beer on the trail. I mean, that's that's a different way of life, you know, and it's it's really transformed this community. So uh, you you. You know, I mean, it transformed my life. It is, yeah. I mean, you look great. Thank you. I mean, I used to just be so much taller, but I'm, I'm much happier <laughs> and shorter now. But it's, uh, you know, I was taller and skinnier. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but, you know, and it's okay. It's a new look. But, uh, but, but just to make that point, you know, it's, studies show that if you get out in nature, you know, just, just a small amount of time every day, get outside, mm-hmm. get, it just your mental health benefits are just amazing. The more time you spend outside – the more benefits you have. And you combine that with getting active, you know, with physical and mental, that's what trails do. Trails will actually make you a happier, healthier person just by getting out. I mean, even just walking down a trail and hearing the sights, smelling the, you know, just seeing, hearing, and smelling nature just is a mental boost. And then you get active and get some heart pumping, and it's going to add, add to your quality of life. And that's what trails do. They add to your quality of life. So funny. I just I, – I have a friend who just reached out and said, hey, I've got a buddy that's going to be in Bentonville. Can you recommend a couple of restaurants? I'm like, sure. What does he want to do? And he was like, well, you know, he just, he's a real foodie. I was like, OK, well, there's nine. Like there's – it's not an endless amount of restaurants. It's not like it's New York or L.A. And I go – but if he's going to do Bentonville, I go, I have an electric bike. He should get on it, and I'll show him around everything. Yeah. And he was like, well, he just wants a couple of recommendations. I go, that's just not how it's done. And I'm trying to explain to him, but it, there was, it was like hitting – even right now, he's like, well, I'm just – he goes, I rented a car. I'm just going to check out everything. I go, but that's not what you do. I go, it's some mountain biking. And I said, oh, and he was like, oh, I don't like biking like that. I go, dude, I have two cruisers. Um, <laughs> it's literally no effort whatsoever. They're like, you know – um, you know, the specialized or whatever. I have those specialized okay. cruisers yeah, yeah. and I have two really nice ones. I go, dude, fun I, as hell. they're fun as hell. And I go, I go, we'll just drive around. And my buddy was like, we just wants a really nice restaurant. And I go, well, dude, we, does he want preacher son? Does he want conifer? Okay. There's only like four really nice ones. I would say, I think four, maybe. And then there's like, Hey, we have a Chick-fil-A. Too. We have a Chick-fil-A, which you know, is I mean, hey. how I do it. I yeah, mean, yeah. If, Gary, if you want to do candlelight <laughs> with uh, me, you and Chick-fil-A, I'm totally uh, down. Cause that is really date night for me. Um, but there's there's all those things. But then you want to and I go, dude, you gotta you gotta drive through the front part of Crystal Bridges to see the you gotta the experience artwork. the town on the way to dinner. You gotta experience the town on the way to dinner. That's what I was telling him. I go, dude, it'll take us 15, 20 minutes to, and I could show you everything. But he's like, oh, he wants to spot and drive. And I go, it's dude, it's not a place where you drive to this. I still have friends that I haven't really ridden around with me on my on my electric bikes, and I'm like, it changes everything in well, this town. People don't get it until they come and see it. I mean, we you know we can talk about it. People can go home after a visit and talk about it. And it kind of like, everybody's like, you're, you're crazy. Well, now, you know, that five, six years ago, we were still kind of a, one of the best kept secrets, you know, as far as mountain bike towns. But, and, and even, even last year, there was a, the, the state tourism division actually was, is doing a really good job of trying to promote the state as mm-hmm. a whole and mountain bike. And they hired a guy from Squamish, British Columbia, which is a mecca for mountain biking. It's by Whistler, and Whistler's known as the downhill mountain bike mecca for the world. I mean, they're they're you know really a big deal. So this this guy named Scott Bell, who's a filmmaker, came was hired by the state tourism group to come in and do some highlights of our trails. And he and he called me, and I told him, hey, 
you know, hit this trail, hit this trail. Well, he was picked up by a buddy of mine at the airport. He was going to take him around. And, uh, and Scott Bell, the filmmaker, was telling James, hey, you know, he picked him up at the airport. They kind of hit it off, so Scott was kind of being transparent. He said, you know, I was hired from the tourism group to, to highlight trails in Arkansas, and I'm from Squamish, so I don't know. It's going to be tough. I'm not sure how I'm going to do this and really make them look as good as our trails or whatever. And, and James was like, well, why don't you hold off, you know, until we get out there and I'll, I'll show you around and before you make judgment. He took him down the All-American from Bentonville Square and down to the middle of the trail, and he saw a castle. He saw the masterpiece, big metal sculptured trail, and all skills parks and kids are wearing. And he said, "Holy crap! What in the you know what in the hell?" <laughs> and so now he's Scott is one of our biggest advocates. He came back again this year and shooting some film. But it just goes to show you really got to you got to experience the town. People, yeah, because nobody it, that was the first thing they they were like, "Oh, well, you know, it's so flat. There's nothing out there." Or yeah, blah blah blah. Yeah, that was the first thing. And this guy was like, "Oh, I don't mountain bike like that." And I'm like. Dude, just like you said, all American. You just cruise mm-hmm. down all American. You go and you're just in, and you leave downtown. All of a sudden, you're in an oasis, of like you're in you're in a forest. Deers are running around. There's natural Absolutely. springs, and it's it's a magical little experience to just drive around. And then the fact that Oz Art has put all this artwork where you don't even and I don't know how it gets moved in the middle of the night. The little leprechauns like they, come they in. do, yeah, they <laughs> really do. Little it's mystic just, creatures, little mystic creatures come in. Um, but I have a little tour. Like if I'm going to take somebody, a group, or somebody that's not been here before, I've got a little go down All American. You know, take a look at Crystal Bridges from the Overlook. Go down and ride these the Choo Choo Berms, which are a paved, flowy set of berms in the woods, which is amazing. Wait, so where's it's, this? It's uh, just near the words crystal bridges is on the north end of crystal bridges across the road is this phase three slaughter pen and it's got these berms it's a it's a series of berms that are back to back okay and they're paved in the woods and uh you just flow down them and it's amazing i don't know if i know these paved berms well i need to take you out there and show you but that's that's part of the tour and then you go down to the masterpiece i don't know if you've seen the masterpiece I don't know where that is. I need to take you on this tour. You need to do a lot of things for me, Gary. And then we go down to the castle, <laughs> go to the castle, which is an actual castle that you ride up the, and then ride down. I will tell you, um, the only time, well, I've wrecked a couple of times, but the one time that I really wrecked was I went down the castle. And just so everybody knows, like this castle thing, they built a mountain bike trails down a big hill and they've themed them into medieval times, and it all starts in the middle of a castle, and then it has a black, it has a blue, it has all these different ones. I decided that I was going to do a blue the first time. Um, I was on my – I didn't have a mountain bike, and so I borrowed my friend's wife's bike, and which is fine. I yeah, felt fine. I felt in touch with myself. I, sure. I felt like a woman's bike was just what I needed. I started down the trail, and I went down that little – that one huge chute, yep. and I felt so good and felt so proud of myself. And then mm-hmm. I took that ride, and I took that – and I started going. I was like, I love these big, fast turns. And I kind of forgot that you guys build jumps also yes. in the path. So when I came around that last turn, I was going so fast. And I looked, and I was like, oh, no, this is going to be really bad. And I launched – so I, I'm so glad that I wonder if we we, uh, we may have some footage of that. You know, there's a there's an automatic camera system on the. I think it was pre automatic camera. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Cause, well, shoot. yeah, because that was like three years ago, maybe. Yeah, like, like two years ago is the automatic camera. The automatic camera stuff's cool too, though. Yeah, wanna, the high tag, like, the high tag guys, Alex and Jonathan, have put together this really cool system that you can ride around, and uh, you have to have a tag on your bike. So yep, you, I've you, got one. Yep, and it. You can jump in the air, and by the time you land and look at your phone, your your video or your photo of you doing your wonderful crash or or, or jump is on your phone. It's pretty cool. That is, it, it's yeah. Sometimes you see things, you're like, oh man, that was such a good idea, mm-hmm. such a brilliant idea. But anyway, the the yep. tour, we're, and then uh, go to the castle, do some jumps, and then go down to the skills park. And there's usually 50 kids repeating the same set of jumps and showing off for each other. And then we work our way to Kohler. For a beer at the uh, Kohler Cafe that you only can get to on a bike or walking. And not forget the nachos. And not forget the nachos. But, I mean, that's kind of the end of the ride that blows everybody's minds. Like this little oasis of a of a restaurant that has great coffee and wonderful beer and all kinds of food is out in the middle of the Kohler Mountain Bike Preserve. That is one of my favorite things to do. It really, mine too. 
If yep. I'm going to take anybody for the first time around slaughter bin, we end up there. Yep. Me, uh, me and, you know, me and the girl used to go out and we'd do picnics. I mean, that mm -hmm. was like my favorite thing to do. We'd just go get nachos and drink beer and have a little picnic. And it's just such a cool place. Yeah. It's like when the guy was asking me, my friend's friend who's coming into town, I didn't even mention it because I don't know what the current state of Kohler is. The, the Airship Cafe is open. No way. Yeah, it's it's all open as of a week ago. There and, and that's and that's a good That's crazy. That's a great segue because one thing that I was oh. going to make a point was you know, it's one thing to have, you know, a a, a generous um family donate to the city to build trails. I mean, that that's that's a wonderful thing, but it, by itself it would it would not be successful. You know, you'd have some trails, but it's just the way this community has come around the trails and City leaders have, have really embraced it. David Wright, the park director of Bentonville, has got behind the trails. Kayleen Griffith, who's visit Bentonville, our tourism president, they all get the fact that these trails are wonderful for our community. And then the community is, is embracing the trails, and they always have. And that, I was actually at a conference last week in Winter Park and met a lady from Ontario that didn't even know I was from Bentonville. And she had told somebody about her trip to Bentonville and how it's her favorite place in the world and she wants to move there. So I went over and, and said, what, what do you like about Bentonville? And the main thing was the vibe, this community vibe that we have in town. And you know it. Mm -hmm. And she said, I just, I just love hanging out at the coffee shop on the square and seeing all the bikers and everybody's happy. And, and that's exactly what's going on here. And, that, and, and again, 21 years ago, this was not a town that had bikers. I, I rode, when I first moved here, I rode my road bike to Walmart to work one time. And, you know, people looked at me like, maybe I had a DUI. You know, why are you riding your bike? <laughs> you know, it's like, uh, but, but anyway, now it is, people, when you, when you recreate on a bicycle, you're more, you're more apt to be, turn that into a utilitarian vehicle too and commute. So that's what's happening. You got everybody having fun on bikes. And you have fam another thing that's happened is because the trails are focused on for beginners. You know, the, there, there's trails for all skill levels. And hey, if you're a if you're a professional shredder, we're going to have stuff for you. But it's really m more than any place else in the world is focused for that new time rider, that all American trail that follows the paved trail, where you can get off the paved trail and do a little bit of dirt. And but you can the main thing is it's designed in a way where you can see other people on the all American trail that. Don't look like a, you know, thirty-five-year-old white male shredder mountain biker. It looks like everybody else. I mean, like, and families leaving the neighborhood, going down the trailhead in the neighborhood and getting on the trail. Other families see those families. So, this accessibility to down, you know, downtown with trails that are designed that aren't intimidating. The trails are not giant jumps everywhere. I mean, they're just fun trails that you can get on and have. No matter how skilled you are, you'll find your your path, and that has transformed the ridership here. Where when you come here and and you've seen it go on a on a Tuesday night during the fall, and all the school kids that are racing for their school are out there practicing. These kids are so talented. You get a bunch of eleven, twelve year old kids without parents riding around in groups, and they'll go to the square and get an ice cream by themselves. I mean, this is like. 50 years ago, how kids acted, and it's the trails that are activating all this, and it's it's wonderful. Yeah, the um, it is it, it's mind blowing all these trails that are, and it's also mind blowing how much I enjoy it. I never really thought I would be out there mountain biking, and when I first started, I was like, oh, I'm going to stay on the greens the whole time. I'm going to stay on the greens. Mm -hmm. Now I'm a blue guy. Huh? I'm a, I'm a blue guy now. Now yeah. I'm not doing. I still kind of try to keep both wheels on the ground. I've kind of. I'm not good at this jumping thing. I haven't figured out. Well, and, and just so everybody knows what you're talking about, I mean, you, we rate the trails based on colors, and, uh, you know, the, the greens are, are more beginner, and you, yep. you can even have a white, which is, like, super beginner, but green is kind of a beginner experience, and then blues have a little more action, a little more maybe steeper, maybe narrower with jumps, rocks, drops, and then if you go to black or double black, then all bets are off. All bets are off. Mm -hmm. There was that one, I don't know, it's over by Kohler, I think. 
but you launch and you have to do three huge jumps just to get to the other side. Otherwise, you're screwed and you land in a rock bed. Mm-hmm. And there's drop the hammer. Drop the hammer is our first big feature, and that's at Kohler. It's because Kohler's private property, it's not city property. We could go a little bigger without having to get permission from the city. And that's where mm-hmm. that's where drop the hammer, which is that big metal diving board, and you can jump over your yeah. buddies that are going down the trail and it lands down in a ravine. Well, that's that's been a signature feature for people to come into Bentonville. And that's that's kind of your, did you drop the hammer or not? I mean, that's kind of your uh, ride of passage. I've heard, I've heard the drop the hammer. Drop the hammer. And that's the diving board. And it drops about 12 or 14 feet down into a 70-foot lander. And then it zings you across the valley floor. And then you hit another jump and jump up and land into a berm and then keep going. What's the coolest thing you've built so far you yourself? Well, I mean— I mean, I guess you built all of it almost. Uh, well, I mean, I, it, and don't give me all the credit. I'm just very fortunate to be conducting a lot of work. And we oh, okay. we recruit the world's best trail builders. And uh, so my imagination, I kind of like try to, you know, work with trail builders who are artists. And we talk about trails. And we have – we just bring in a lot of brilliant craftspeople, men and women, and we talk about what we can build. And I and I am very fortunate to, to be at, you know – they're conducting this this work of art trail system that we're building, and and Tom will you know and Stuart have these ideas and these expectations. We all work together to you know through our trail builders to to make wonderful wonderful features. And so you know the idea of a of a hub like Kohler has a hub which is a twenty foot platform, and you because we don't have you know tall mountains here, you have to have trail speed. So the idea of having a raised platform. To start a downhill trail is became a theme of, of Bentonville. So we started thinking about different hubs, and the hub, like the castle, was an evolution of this hub idea. But what it is, Got it, it. it's a it's a social gathering spot too. And so when we see things that are trending positively, we do more of it. And and just like all of the machine cut trail, like a lot of the mach- the, the trail in Bentonville is made with a with an excavator, and it's wider, smoother, a little easier to ride. You can make big jumps, but we uh, to change the experience for mountain bikers, we added a bunch of trails north east of Bentonville and in Bella Vista, only using trail to you know hand tools. So it's hand cut trail, which you know, what's the difference? Well, the difference is you can build smaller, more narrower, more intimate trail in places you can't get a machine, and also the terrain, the texture of the terrain is more organic and rugged. The, the roots, like on a machine, it'll rip roots out. It'll it'll move rocks. It just kind of bullies its way through the Got it. hillside. But when you use three, four, five, or six individuals with specialty hand tools, they can pick away at it and leave those little texture pieces, which makes it a little more exciting to ride. And it feels more like you're in nature because you don't have a giant corridor that a machine went down. You, you know, your elbows almost drag the trees as you go by. And so when you ride in, in Bella Vista, there's a lot of hand cut trail over there, and it's really delightful. Even the, you know, the our old school mountain bikers love it, and even some of the new beginners love it because it's a different experience. Yeah, it was totally a different. I actually went to hand cut. My buddy was like, oh, you're going to love it. It's so much easier. Hand and cut hollow. And yep. I was like, it's not easier. It no. You had to pay attention. I enjoyed it, but I was ready to kind of – I mean, I probably could have done um, – the Greenway had been fine that day, and next thing you know, I was on hand cut hollow, and I was really having to pay attention. And that's that's where your stress relief comes in. If you're going down the Greenway and you're daydreaming about your stress in your life, because you can zigzag down the Greenway, when you go to hand cut hollow or one of these narrow technical trails, your your brain is on survival mode, and you do not think about stress. It is true that is that has mm-hmm. been like a, a um, we talk about that all the time. About it's so nice to get on the trails and bust your ass down the trails because. Everything you were stressed about has to go away because you have to pay attention. You have to pay attention. And if you don't and you have to kind of be in the mode of mountain biking and being with nature and you kind of – and then when you get done, you – I mean a lot of my stress goes away. Totally. If you if you sit in, in an office job all day long and then you jump in your car and you're listening to a podcast and then you go home and you make dinner and lay on the couch, you're never going to get 
mentally or physically well. Unless you guys were listening to the Good Time Show, and then you will feel completely. Well, you can take an hour out of your lives. <laughs> yeah. I mean, come on. But if you do that day after day, I mean, you're just going to be depressed, and you're going to feel guilty, and all that. So, get outside, get on a trail, walk, you know, run or bike a trail. And I think every community should have a trail. And we talk about this. I have the opportunity. I'm very fortunate that I get to travel around the world and because different countries want to, they've heard about Bentonville. I've been to Scotland twice. I've been Switzerland, Germany, Austria, Japan, talking about Bentonville and around the country because- How crazy is that? That's crazy. It's crazy. I mean- People just have to understand that this was a small town that really no one wanted to live in. Nope. Nope. And And- I don't but, mean to be rude, but nobody wanted to live here. But Everyone but Tom's did. crazy idea that I didn't even get when we first started talking about it. We were out there, you know, raking a part of the five miles, and he had this big vision about Bentonville becoming a mountain bike destination culture with, you know, cycling culture. And I just thought he was a crazy kid, but, hell, we had five miles of trail to ride. Let's do it. But that has really become – this has become the proving grounds for – for all these other mountain bike enthusiasts who want this in their hometown. So they want somebody to talk about what's going on in Bentonville. And so I've been, I've been able to travel and talk about it, but it's, it's just, it's something special about just how this, you know, outdoor recreational amenity just changes everybody's quality of life and improves it. I remember I was here and there was – I think they were from France or something and it was kind of the same thing. I don't know if they all came in town but I, I remember meeting these guys at Blake Street. Go Blake Street House, my sponsor. Um, uh, but I met them at Blake Street House and when I first met them, you know – I mean they're French. You know, They come with a little bit of arrogance no matter which way you do it just because it's naturally that's who they are. Um, and they were like, yes, yeah, we're going to – you know, they, they don't know. They were part of the biggest trails systems. They were super famous. And then they came back the next day after riding it for the first time. They had just gotten there. And the next day they came back like, this, this is incredible. I can't, I can't do an accent. Well, you did um, pretty good, yeah. I did, I did all right. Um, but they, it, it's funny to watch people. Well, first off, it, you people like me like, oh, God, it's a little town in Arkansas. Yeah, it's something these people think it's the mountain bike capital of the world. But everybody's blown away. Everyone's blown away. And the fact that you say that you travel around the world now to bring a concept that Tom and Stuart just kind of thought about is is also crazy. It's, it is crazy. I, I sometimes I I think I'm in a different world and I'm in the matrix and this is just a this is just a uh, you know what do you call it a uh, this is not real. All right. This is the Truman. This show. is a simulation. This, this is what is, I, this it is, is a this simulation. Is, but I'm enjoying it. it what, what's what, what's what? What country have you been surprised about that you've taken like the ideas of what we're doing here and put them into the other country? Well, I mean. I haven't put them in. They've come here or I've come there and talked about it. And the, the country of Norway, you know, is, is very impressive. Uh, and, and Lars Jensen, who's kind of the, the trail developer for the country of Norway, has become a friend of mine. And he called me about four years ago out of the blue. He'd, he called me on my phone. He got my phone number from somebody. And he said, Gary, my name is Lars. I'm from Norway. And I've been, I've been uh, you know, selected to help drive development of mountain bike trails all over the country of Norway, you know they got a little oil money up there, you know. Yeah. And uh, we, I've done, we've done a research, and we want to come to Bentonville. And I said, well, come on. So nine of them from Norway came here and four years ago, five years ago, and I spent a couple of days with them, and they spent a week here, and they went back and they've been busy. And I'm like, Lars, slow down, don't don't get ahead of us, you know. But they built some really fun parks, and uh, I just, you know, I, I he actually came back in March with. A dozen Europeans, and uh, we're collaborating on a international trail builders trade school curriculum, and and our community college is going to actually have a a accredited trail building trade school that'll be a, a global recognized school. So I think I just saw that on visit Bill or something. It's going like, to be awesome. But anyway, Kayleen. so so it's really fun to see all these world class trail developers come to Bentonville. And we put them on bikes, and we all go around and we blow their mind and. You know, we've got Graham from Scotland who's done some of the most wonderful trails in the world. But he's got a, you know, he's, they're rugged, steep, nasty trails over there. He would love to have some of the beginner trails to get more people riding bikes. Same thing with uh, Switzerland and Germany. They want to they build trails within their communities that people can 
leave their neighborhood or leave their house and get on a trail. It's just a little tougher over there because of the density. And, you know, you got communities that have been around thousands of years, and it's hard to just cut a single track between the houses, you know. So you're over at the Walton Family Foundation. Now you are running stuff over with Tom and Stewart with, at Runway. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's the new new world. What is the next – what's next on the agenda for this whole vision of Northwest Arkansas and the – well, you know, I also want to ask you what's going on in Bella Vista. Well, let's let's start with what what's next. Okay, let's and, do my what's next. I, I always and, do this. I always, and, want, uh, I always want to answer two questions at the same time. Because we're still trying to figure out Bella Vista, honestly. But, oh, okay, good. But really, you know, if you think about <laughs> it, the, this, this formula that was really successful with mountain biking is, you know, basically creating a mountain bike – Creating trail for beginners that is accessible from town. You know, that's a super formula. Why can't you do that with paddling? Little Sugar Creek that goes through Bella Vista has, I mean, people are already paddling now. What if it's improved and there's there's operators that are doing shuttles for paddling and there's vendors, you know, with equipment and food all along the creek bed? And I mean, that could be something real special. And it's catered to teaching new paddlers how to, how to, kayak or canoe paddleboard down down a small creek that's that's an exciting idea that that's could be happening rock climbing there's a guy named Dennis Nelms who's been leading the workforce on building accessible rock climbing Springdale you know just east of the Jones Center which is the center of Springdale there's a there's a neighborhood and behind the neighborhood there's a bluff wall that Dennis has been building out for for new beginner rock climbers to come out. And it's also progressive where I don't care how experienced you are, you're going to have a tough time on some of that wall, but it's also really focused on, on the beginner. You know, that's, that's the future. Outdoor recreation that's accessible and uh, teachable, you know, to, to the masses. And that's how you get all these kids outside off their video games and phones. That's how we, you know, improve our planet and make make our nation better getting kids outside it i mean i you know and like i say i i really loved hollywood when i went back man everybody looked so angry driving in their cars getting out and i don't think they've realized you know we all go hiking at runyon canyon and i love runyon canyon there's like little places to hike and if i didn't live at the very base of the hollywood hills i think my soul would have died but because mm-hmm. i at least got to get out in nature and walk up the hollywood hills and kind of back down mm-hmm. but being out here has changed Everything. I don't ever like to leave. I just left recently to go on vacation, and it was, I was oddly missing home, which is mm. strange that mm. I would be on vacation and like, man, I'm really missing out, I'm missing out on this Bentonville life. Yeah. No well, one, no one believes. Hey, me there's some there. cool trails in California, but there's not enough. I mean, if and you drive around California, you see all these wonderful hillsides that could be just perfect palettes for trails. You know. Oh and, yeah. And, I mean, I'm not saying the rest, but I'm also a person that. I live downtown, so. Well, but I mean, there 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 could be more trails if. Oh yeah. If it wasn't so restrictive, you know, and. Oh yeah. You know, like Laguna Beach. You know, there's there's so many famous mountain bikers there. Brian Lopes is a multi-time world champion, and he lives right at the base of the Laguna Hills and Laguna Beach. Wonderful house, and he has to ride illegal trails above him. There's, he's tucking me on them. There's they're wonderful trails, but they're all illegal. Right. Well, not all of them, but a lot of them. And uh, there, there's actually a really funny uh, Instagram, you know, kind of a spoof. It's uh, Laguna Beach Bike Park, and there's this, you know, there's a whole thing on this Instagram that's talking about how they're gonna they're gonna build new Bentonville in Laguna Beach. They're gonna take everything that they're gonna replicate Bentonville and put it on the top of the mountain <laughs> of Laguna Beach, and it's got all the locals like pissed off. They don't know what the hell's going on, but it's it's just a it's a, it's a lot of fun. That's really funny. Oh, California. Just mentioned Arkansas. They're very upset. But, yeah. Um, yeah. People need to really realize. And you were from Missouri and now you live here. And so how how big do you think – what about the Greenway? I want to know about the Greenway. Is the Greenway – how much more of the Greenway do we have to do to connect it from Fayetteville to Bentonville? It's connected. It is connected. Yeah. There's a big ribbon, you know, 40-some miles long. But the, the future is connecting into – the city more, you know, like the, the big vision for Bentonville is safely kids can all ride to school and you can commute to work safely. And that, what that's, that's a big move. And there's a, there's a big mission to, to put in 30 miles of, of, uh, 
protected bike lanes and paved trails in Bentonville. And um, what that's going to do is just, you know, get us off out of the car because, again, Bentonville was one of those one person in a car driving to Walmart home office and parking in the massive parking lot and walking into the home office. I mean, you know, whenever they were building the new campus, I asked one of the, one of the developers, how many parking lots, how many parking spaces are you putting in there? 15,000. You know, and if, but if you, if you get the majority of people using other means of transportation, you don't need to waste all that space on parking. And it's a lot easier to get around if you're, I mean, if you're three miles or less from, from work, why would you want to put yourself through that irritating stress of trying to drive through traffic for three miles when you could just ride your bike quicker that, you know, and, and the e-bike has made that all possible, you know, because even if you weren't a fit cyclist or wanted to get I feel sweaty, like you're talking directly to me. So I, I'm, I'm looking at you, but I'm, <laughs> but I, I, I like an e-bike as oh, well. Oh, it's the greatest thing in the world. It just, this e-bike has changed. It's changed everything. It has changed. You know, my favorite thing about the e-bike was being at Blake Street. I just got into town. I know nothing. I just, I, I knew nothing about Walmart. I knew nothing about anything. But I definitely didn't know anything about e-bike. I, all I know is that if it, if there's a way to cheat, I cheat. You know, if there's – if you know, I'm not here to be the mountain bike king of the world. And we I went mountain biking, and I really enjoyed it. But it was brutal. You get on some of those hills, you are dead. And it also made me go, do I really want to go today? Do I really want to go tomorrow? Do... Yep. And then one day I just um, decided to ride an e-bike, and it was the greatest thing because it's a little – it's a little bit like a jet ski. You're really just out there having a really good time. You get a really good workout still. People think you're cheating. You do get a workout. But everybody that I talked to at Blake Street was like, this is cheating. and There's no way. One year later, every single one of those guys have them. The, the naysayers like a, are the guys who haven't done it yet. The naysayers are the ones that did. Yep. Haven't done. Yeah, it's changed, it's changed my world. I have now two cruisers, a mountain bike, and I never thought I'd say this, but I might get into gravel biking. So, so you came here because of a woman. I came here because of a woman, and you stayed because of the the magic. Yes. So, what was it? What was it that kind of captured your heart about Bentonville? That's um, that's it's kind of easy, I guess. Like I kind of really, I've got so many friends here, I can't even tell you. I mean, I I kind of make friends kind of wherever I go. Um, I didn't get the nickname Good Times because I'm at Bad Time, um, but, but uh, this community is like. You actually mentioned the, a little while ago, and what 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 fascinates me is about this town is that everyone thinks that everybody in Bentonville is a local, and it's completely the opposite. People are like, "Wow, you moved from Hollywood!" Like, and I was—I was right in the middle of Hollywood. I'm right under the D, pretty much, right by the Silent Intelligence Center. If you're into it, um, I'm not. Just gonna, you know, got a lot of friends in it, but it's fine. Um, they won't let me in. Uh, but like, when I came here, there was like. It's just it, – well, that's what it is. Hollywood is just like Bentonville in the way that nobody from Hollywood is from Hollywood. You go to Hollywood, no one's from Hollywood. Everybody's from somewhere else. Now, the difference is that when you come from Hollywood, you could be like Tammy from the middle of nowhere, homecoming queen, and she's beautiful and talented and whatever. So Hollywood is like the mecca of homecoming kings, homecoming queens, the most beautiful people ever. You're the most popular. You're the one. And they all come to Hollywood because they think that they can make it. Right. A lot of them can. A lot of them don't. Whatever. But they're all still – but everybody comes there and changes to the environment. So like if you meet someone who's a wonderful person, we all like hope to scoop them up because they have this vibrant, beautiful energy – and within a few years, they're like, um, I don't, I don't know if I can go to that party because I'm hanging out with so and so. And you know, it's uh -huh. like so it, the the kind of in the same way, the the culture of the community kind of feeds into what it is, and you become a Hollywood person, you become mm. part of the business. It becomes, you know, we're all working, we're all trying to be famous, we're all trying to. That's the that's the world. Here, it's completely completely the opposite. Uh. Everyone comes here from Hollywood. They've, they're sick of – well, not Hollywood necessarily, but Hollywood, California, New York. I mean big city, Chicago. Everybody I've met is a huge city person that then comes here and instead of going – and they were all surrounded by that you know, infrastructure of judgment and like you need to be this or you need to be that. And you kind of come in here. I will tell you, Josh Kyle quoted this and so this is kind of – his quote is what made me change my viewpoint because it's such beautifully said. Um, but when you come here to Bentonville, 
you lose all that because everybody really does have your back. And mm. you really soon realize that these people that are your friends are truly your friends. And they got nothing to gain from you except for to try to make you better. You come to this community, people people want me to be successful. So you come to Bentonville and you become the best version of yourself. You become, yeah, you become, I think you become yourself again. Mm -hmm. You bec you learn how to play. This is mm -hmm. like a playground for adults. Mm -hmm. It's really just a fun little place where you just meet, and you, you meet somebody and you're like, hey, how you doing? And they go, dude, I'm doing great. And there's no, there's nothing behind the eyes of like, where he works. Well, you know where he works. He probably works at Walmart. Um, so there's all that. But, um, and I say this and I hope the family doesn't get mad at me, but they, uh, Josh said this and I thought it was really interesting. Josh, and he said it on the podcast, so I guess it's already out there. But Josh told me that, uh, Josh Kyles, who built the ledger that I'm in, first Bible building, all the things. Um, Josh said that in every other place in the world, you have to keep up with the Joneses. And so at the mystique of the, the culture is like, oh, well, what kind of car do you own? What kind of car do you drive? All that kind of stuff. Well, in Bentonville, there's one Jones and they're the richest people in the world and they're cool and they mm -hmm. don't, they don't try to show off their money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that, so if you came in here going like, oh, do you know how much money I got? I mean, it's kind of a joke because there's people that have more money than, and they're, they're you cool. Can't, you can't catch them. You can't catch them. There's, yep. There is no catching those people, and they're doing wonderful things for the community. They're doing wonderful things for the people. They're doing wonderful things for the and world. And they're regular people. And they're just regular people. Mm -hmm. And they're doing things for the world that people don't even know about. And it's just, it's kind of a beautiful little thing. Well, one thing you, you one point you made, which was a good point, is even though you've only been here a year, you, be, you become a local pretty quickly. Very quickly. And, and that's that's a magical part of Bentonville. And it even happened to to uh, a, a journalist that came here. I'd, I'd met her in, in Scotland, and I spent several days with a group of them writing, a group of journalists writing. And I just sat down next to Sissy and started talking about Bentonville like I was talking about, you know, Bubba Gump Shrimp. That's you know, kind Benton, of I am, yeah. Bentonville yeah. this, Bentonville that. And she's like, I've never heard of Bentonville. And so she saw my presentation in Scotland, and she goes, okay, I'm coming. So Kayleen, Visit Bentonville, mm -hmm. worked with her group, and they, they she came here and spent a week with us. And the first night she was here, we took her to a party in, in Bijou. Have you met Bijou? Yeah, yeah, Bijou, yeah. Bijou's yep. cooking, and this is that uh, that out that outside magazine, you know, like training camp for the Leadville 100, you know, whatever. So there was everybody, in, you know, there's a big group of people there, and everybody's great. And so that for you know she thought it was all made up for her like this was a fake party <laughs> because it was a wonderful party and I said no no this is this is real and I said now you if you spend a few days in Bentonville you will feel like a local yeah and she's like no nah, I, I don't believe it well the next day she's walking across you know she'd met all these people at this party the next day she was walking across the Bentonville Square to go into Walmart to buy some snacks and somebody yelled across the the square for her. Hey, sissy. And she turned around and waved and she, she called me. She said, oh my God, you're right. I feel like a local. <laughs> and so that's the magic of Bentonville. It, it really is. And like, you know, I, 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 you know, I, people get annoyed with me because everywhere, what sh whatever show I'm working on, I'm preaching about Bentonville. People are like, are people paying you? And I'm like, no, I just love it. I just can't get enough of it. I've got to figure out, you know, my machine that I'm trying to build out here. I, I, you know, I, I just, I, you know, I bought a house. It's gutted. You got to figure that out, but I'm all in. I'm all in on this Bentonville experience. Do you have any old stories, like crazy Bentonville stories, or crazy Bentonville stories? I never you had any Sam stories or any like uh, you know any of the old school days Walmart stories growing up. You know, there's 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 so many stories. Let me. I should have prepared for no. Some it's old, okay. But you know, just it was just been it's just been a, a wonderful thing. Just you know, seeing the the family just regular people around town. And, and just when you, when you grow up, I say, you know, when you hang out with them as many years as we all have people that have been here for 15 or 20 years, you just, you just think of them as your friends and neighbors, you know, and, and, uh, but they're just, they're so generous. They, they've changed this community. And, uh, you know, I think we're all real fortunate to, to have them here. And there's, there's a lot more coming. There's a lot more wonderful things coming. And, and, uh, I think what they try to do is just try to, to try things here that that other communities can replicate. This is not a, you know, Bentonville's going to win and nobody else does. We, we we try to share everything with the world. That's that's working in Bentonville. That's why there's been economic impact studies and other other studies done on what we're doing and trying to show that hey, it works. You know, education. You know, the family. You know, in, invest in ed education to try to 
make make America better. And uh, you know, just there's 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 all kinds of naysayers, you know, about Walmart and the family. But man, I've I've spent my life in, embedded in it, and I've seen it in, inside and out. And it's and uh, you know, I'm I'm proud to be part of this uh, runway group and everything they've done. Well, Gary, I want to ask you a million more questions, but I think that um, I want to tell you thank you for coming on The Good Time Show. I've been in the search for you for so long. Not that it was probably hard to find you, but I, I heard this legendary Gary Vernon who was building all the trails and we're everybody in this town that is part of this community has to thank you because what this town is because of those trails and what Tom and Stuart have done and what you know the foundation and runway or putting together in this thing is fascinating and made the world a, a, I'm just, a better I'm place. I'm just lucky so. to be part of it. I'm, you know, I'm pretty good at executing and, and uh, coming up with some ideas, so that, that works out well. 30 years of Walmart will, will train you to, to do all kinds of good things. That's good. All right, well, thanks for coming to the Good Time Show. and um, I had a good time. That's, that was the whole point. Yeah. That's the whole point. All right, guys, thank you, um, and uh, please listen and please subscribe, and I hope you enjoyed this podcast, and well that's our show if you didn't get a chance to watch the episode check it out on youtube and spotify you can also listen to the good time show on apple Podcasts or any other platform we are always trying to grow our planet good times community so subscribe and follow us at good times us on almost all social media platforms this episode was presented and recorded live at blake street house sound lounge in bentonville arkansas a social club where people from all walks of life come together just to be themselves and make the community a better place Till next time, good times, everybody.